So today on Rich Politics, slightly different. I did say that I would be uh, traveling up and down the country, different parts of Wales and the UK. Uh, and today I'm on my way to my hometown again, Leslie, where I'm going to be speaking to an incredible guy called Gwillem, who runs a rugby team for disabled adults and it's a unique thing and someone sent it to me on social media so i thought i'd cover the story so i'm heading there now i'm going to talk to Gwillem and find a little bit about what they do internationally to help support those who are disabled or suffering with autism and play rugby so literally just arrived in people's park here in Clenthley uh, Gwillem has just stood over there going to be speaking to him in a few moments and a lot of the guys just gathering and already is a sense of like real coming together you know, this is a mixed ability sport, really. One that's not funded by the Welsh Government, not funded by any big sponsors. It's grassroots stuff, and I think things I guess need to be known about. And so hopefully through Rich Politics, if someone out there that wants to sponsor them, hey, listen, go ahead and do that. They'd really appreciate it, I'm sure. I'm going to film some of the uh, training in a few moments, talk to a few of the players here, and Gwilym as well, get to know a little bit about the project they're doing here. Because again, Rich Politics isn't about just political things. It's about local people doing incredible things in their community. What we're about is giving guys opportunity to just play some rugby. At, uh, that's, that's pretty much all it is. It's a regular game, regular game of rugby. Boys want to get involved in it. There's no messing about. There's no um, worries about what they look like, what they what they what they might appear to be like. They just come in here and they're just part of a crowd, the same as everyone else. But what's special about mixed ability rugby is that it's not so special. It's the fact that they don't get segregated. There's no isolation about it. They, they they're all integrated as part of one big club, and it's, it gets the feel of that as you go through we play regular rugby against regular regular teams and we don't discriminate against anyone no matter how big small old young you are you come along you have a game of rugby we have a bit of fun afterwards and the boys get so much social side of that and so much empowerment from that there's there's, there's guys here that have played rugby from the start of it right from 25 years and haven't left it because they get so much out of it so i went to college in pembrokeshire with one of my mates called dylan um, he kind of started playing before i did uh, with mixed ability side anyway and then I was like I might as well go along and have a go and then I carried on from there. Uh, I come here so I can um, basically um, we are basically a, a, a good uh, mixability um, side um, mixability and we go like everywhere around um, UK really we've been up to Scotland been to Cork as well, um, Scotland, um, we've been to Cardiff, play on Carvans Park, um, played in the Melian Stadium as well, and uh, obviously we have good fun, we, 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 we like brothers really, because at the end of the day, if, if something goes wrong, then we're just there for each other really. Like, we're like a family and we get on with each other and it's a good, good, good bonding and stuff. I basically got food to the Warriors because I went to play football for the Olympics and I went to play for a local football team and I was getting picked on because of my learned disabilities so I left the team at the end because I couldn't put up with anymore. I was told then about the Warriors, went down to the old Stradley Park and uh, that's how I got involved in it since then I've never looked back. I, I, I love that beer, that beer's my, my life. So, Gwilym and Jamie um, and Chris and you've got Kearney and you've got Dan John who help structure the club. Um, Gwilym um, I met when I came down to the training the first time and then uh, Jamie and I met further on down the line and it's just a great atmosphere, a great club to be a part of. Gwilym, thank you so much for letting me come down to see the boys training tonight. I've been really excited. Someone contacted me on social media and told me about the work and mate to be I'm blown away. You know what what inspires you and what is Slashley Warriors all about? Right, so well um I guess what inspired us is just wanting to play rugby is, is the main thing. What the Warriors is about is uh, playing rugby at a level that anybody can join in. Um, for those boys uh, with disabilities that perhaps need that extra sort of bit of guidance, that perhaps need just someone to sort of get them into the game, but it'd be a bit difficult to just rock up with their local side and say, oh yeah, I fancy it. You know, that's a bit of a step.
step for them. Uh, I guess we're, we're playing at that level. Some of the boys have gone on then to play second team and, and you know, for their local clubs as well. And some of the boys are happy just playing with us and having, you know, and having a bit of involvement. So, so getting everyone involved in rugby and beyond that then that sort of sense of identity and, and uh, camaraderie together. Um, the boys with disabilities, um, it's, it's something, you know, there's no, as you can see, you, you can't tell by looking, it, it's, it's proper inclusion, um, everybody's in together and they're based on their merits. Rugby's a great game for, uh, if you can do something, if you can do anything on the field, then, then there's a the value in it and that's, that's great. Well, you've said that, they've been playing touch rugby, it's the most aggressive form of touch rugby <laughs> I've ever seen, to be honest, but I'm absolutely amazed by the, you know, just the, the, the sense of community that is amongst them and all that. They're like brothers, in there. I mean, mm. I must make you proud, though. And, you know, the work you've been doing here, why, why is it so important for grassroots sports like this to be heard or known about? Why is it so important? Well, I think, Joe, um, for anybody, you know, never, never mind uh, disabilities or anything like that, uh, everybody wants to feel part of the community. They want to feel they've done something. They want something away from the, the, you know, an outlet in, in life somewhere. Um, and I think rugby is especially good, Joe. You see the hashtags rugby family or football family, whatever. But I think the sort of physical nature of rugby means that there's a bit of respect. Uh, you know, anybody who's prepared to sort of cross that line and, and be hit or, or hit other people is a bit of respect. So, so it's important for anybody. But then if you think of the boys with disability, they've perhaps um, come from a smaller social background. They've perhaps gone to a specialist school where not everyone can socialise. Perhaps people have you know, smaller classes, smaller school, so they haven't got a smaller circle then. Perhaps they haven't gone into work so much or their work is more difficult to go into, so they haven't got a, a work circle of friends. So if people watching sort of think, right, okay, take away 80% of my school friends, take away 80% of my work friends, and I'm not playing a sport, how big is your social circle? So, you know, for those boys, they, they could be really isolated, they've often got older parents, um, and so we had, we had boys who were sort of, so what are you doing match, where's playing England match day, what are you doing? Oh, I, oh, I might watch it in the house, you know, I'm going to watch it in the house with my parents. Well, the difference then to going to Kevnithin or Betos or, or Furness or whatever, and watching it together, your team, their team, the whole country, you know, it's a point where the whole country's together in Wales, England, one of the most important days of the year, isn't it? Just, just before Christmas Day. Um, <laughs> and, you know, these guys are sitting, sitting in the house watching it and then, you know, it's a whole different experience. So, it's that sense of community, it's that, that social circle, it's that putting the same badge on, it's being part of a sport that's uh, important in Wales, internationally, as you know, you know, especially important. It's weird if boys haven't played a bit of rugby, so somewhere, you know, even, even the boys who don't like it, that they've been in a school team or a Cubs team or a works team or something, so these boys were sort of missing out and some of them are massive rugby fans, so yeah, it's really important. You, um, because obviously, you know, how are you guys funded? Because, you know, clearly, you know, clubs like yourself are normally self-funded. It must be a struggle. How are you funded and, you know, what's your model for trying to get this, keep the thing going, really? So, um, pretty much like, like any club, I guess, we've got a, we've got a membership, so the boys will pay a, a, a sort of membership membership fee and we work very hard so it's great to have you here today because you know raising a profile is good for our sponsorships and and good for the boys themselves but um so we we, we do get a bit of sponsorship Wardle insurance are going to sponsor us this year um you know and the local companies have been been good over the years to be fair and um, we get a lot of support from the local clubs Berryport where we uh, usually based um have been great we have uh, obviously we're using the Wanderers field here today in People's Park so that's that's good. We don't have to run a bar or anything. We don't have to keep the club out going. So it's just here we are. So if we can get a bit of sponsorship in and pay for the kit and make sure we've got enough money for bus trips and, and what have you and, and you know insurance, first aid equipment, what have you, it's not too bad. It, it's a constant yeah. uh, battle's not right, but concern. Yeah, you know, we're always on the on the look for support and stuff. But um, just, yeah, it works. It works. Well, folks, I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed that. It was a fantastic time with the team. Love being with Gwilym and the guys, and of course. We're going to be back next Friday with usual rich politics. Don't forget to tune in, subscribe to the channel. We're going to be covering loads of stories from around the country, from the UK and around Wales. Grassroots things as well, not just political issues, but real heroes in communities, the unsung heroes. I'll catch you next week here on Rich Politics. Bye.